everybody. Welcome back. Um, today, we want to talk about 401ks, Roth IRAs, and Roth 401ks, and a couple other things, because I think there's some uh, clarity that we need to kind of get out there. You know, I've watched a lot of the videos that are out there trying to explain, and I think they do a good job of explaining, mm -hmm. right, the, the exact rules of it. But I think we got to go one step further into, you know, the people out there that either have any one of those or don't have any of them and kind of want to know more about it, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, do? I, I don't think it's a one size fits all. No, it's not. It depends on your age. Age, income, your job, right? And like mm -hmm. not every job offers any one of these. And if they and if you're working somewhere and you don't have access to, you know, your employer is not giving you this ability, there's still other ways to go ahead and, and invest in for some sort of a future retirement, right? Yes, there is. So let's first talk about the 401k, right? Okay. Uh, I want to give just a quick history on the 401k and when it came about. There's arguments out there exactly when. What I read was it came out in 1978, okay? Okay. And why it's there, right? The whole purpose it was created was originally for high-income earners, People who were making seven figures a year or getting seven figure bonuses. And they're like, man, I don't want to pay tax on this big bonus. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the IRS came up with this provision of like, okay, well, if you want to defer the tax and put that money away, we'll allow you to do that. And so when that happened back in the late seventies, um, some of the other custodian places like insurance companies said, Hey, wait a minute. You could do that with the people that are making, you know, a lot of money and these big bonuses. Can't we do that for the average person? Some attorney came up with that and went found out and the IRS said, well, sure. It's, you know, it's under the statute of 401k. So that's how, that's why it's called 401k because it was just an IRS statute. Oh, okay. 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 Good and to know. now when that happened, before that happened, the way that companies would help you would be companies who would uh, put together some sort of a pension plan for you. Mm -hmm. But it was all on the burden of the company, right, to create your retirement for you, like a pension, right? They wanted you to go work for them for 25, 30, or whatever years, and then they would give you a pension. Well, that was a pretty big burden on companies. Like, that adds up. Like, late down, years down the road... I'll just use round numbers. Let's say you had 100 employees. Your company's now 30 years old. You have 200 employees, and all of a sudden, 50 of them retired. So now you have 250 employees that you're technically paying for, mm -hmm. but only getting production out of 200 of them. Right. So that's like, that gets pretty expensive. Expensive, yeah. So now when this provision came out, they all thought, well, let's shift the burden of retirement to the employee instead of the employer, Right which was genius idea in the industry because it saved a lot of companies, number one, and took the liability off. So they all loved it. So insurance guys were going out selling that product going, listen, I'll save you money. Do you have a pension plan? Yeah. How about I, how about we shift the burden? And, and how do you think employers receive that? Like, like I'm in. Yeah. You mean it's not me? I don't have to play. No, no, no. You could still have the option, the choice of contributing to their plan. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's an option. It's a choice. You don't have to. But that was an incentive to hire people like, hey, listen, I have we have this new plan 401k. I will match. Right. Either sometimes dollar for dollar percentages of what you want to save. I'll match. Yeah, I've heard it even three dollars. Right now, what a lot of people don't know is they're not re required to do that. Right. Right. And I think a lot of people think, well, I'm going there because they match. And I'll give you an example of when they didn't match. Do you want to know, do you know when? No, I don't. So when they stopped matching, right? Because they can stop and start it. It's their discretion. It's their money, right? Mm -hmm. On in not on, but in two thousand eight, when the meltdown happened, financial meltdown came down. Do you think those companies couldn't afford to keep matching? No. So they stopped because they couldn't afford it. So whatever was in your four hundred one k, and again, we can see stories on sixty minutes and all over the place. People's four hundred one k's crashed by fifty percent or sometimes more. Mm -hmm. Right? They lost all this money. So not only did you lose money because the market crashed, the meltdown, financial meltdown, and then your employer wasn't matching, but you were still contributing because you were still working, making money. Or in maybe some they cases, weren't. Or maybe they weren't. You got laid off. Mm -hmm. But let's just assume for the ones who did keep working, because not everybody got laid off. Right. A lot of people did. Right. That like, oh hey, listen, I'm still contributing my ten percent, fifteen, whatever. Well, 
but you're not matching, so it's not growing as fast. So my point is that, guys, they're not required to match you. And they can start and stop whenever they want. Every I company's know. individual. Now, so I'm sure yeah. there, are, I'm sure there's companies out there that rode the wave out because they could afford it. I'm talking big companies, probably like I would say uh, a UPS or a FedEx or you know, huge corporations that you know, no, we promise to do that. We're going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but smaller companies, hey, we can't do that. We can't afford it, right? So one thing I didn't know, originally it was insurance people that were selling this product? Insurance people were selling that product. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Right. For the uh, custodians that were offering it. So uh, first and foremost, let's understand that. That's where the 401k came from, right? It's to shift the burden onto the individual. Mm -hmm. Because I know now my personal experience, I don't know the percentage, but I can tell you a lot of people borrow money against their 401ks. So they take it out. But you shouldn't do that. That's that's one of those types of piggy banks you're putting money into that you don't break. Mm-hmm. Leave it in mm-hmm. there because it's designed for you for later years. And also, I want people to understand that the 401k was never designed to be your full retirement. And right. I think people go to work and they think, hey, I got a job and I got a 401k and so I'll have retirement. Like, that's not what it was designed for. It was designed to be one leg of a three-legged stool, meaning you were supposed to, uh, yeah, save that way, right, through your 401k's one leg. You were supposed, and then you're going to get a retirement income age of 62 is the first time you can start taking social security. That's another leg. Mm -hmm. And then whatever your other investments were, Mm -hmm. right? That's a three-legged stool. Whether it be real estate or it could be real estate, stock market, whatever other areas. But so when folks depend a hundred percent on my 401k to be my retirement, you could lose. Yeah. Because we don't know what the market's going to do in the future. And so just like uh, I remember I talked to someone years ago and they, yeah, how many streams of income do you have? Like people who have jobs, like I have one stream of income, I have a job. Like mm-hmm. you should always have multiple streams of income right? Mm-hmm. because you don't want to, if something happens, just like if you're a one K crash and you were depending on that, you're like, Holy crap, there's no more money. Then if you also, you know, we're invested in index funds and some other, the other, other vehicles that are out there that we can put money into to grow you'd be safer. You don't have all your eggs in one basket, but let's talk to the folks about the 401k and what's, what's allowed in there. Tell them. What do you mean? What's allowed in there? Well, the, the amounts. Oh, for your personal contribution for 2022, it's 20,500. Okay. For the whole year. So that's the most you can put in there. What's the most amount of money that you're allowed to make? The, if you're a single filer, the most money you're allowed to make to use to be able to take advantage of that is 144,000. Oh, no, that's for the Roth IRA. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you can make as much money as oh, you want okay. and be a part of a 401k plan. Now, okay. what's the number growing? And, and these numbers change every year, guys. And you should be, you should understand that because a lot of people say, hey, I can afford to save or put away more than $20,000 a year. Mm-hmm. Right. Do, do they make good money? So what's it going to be for 2023? 22500 So it's going up $2,000 mm-hmm. from this year to next year. And then if you're married, you're able to add an additional 6500 to be able to catch up. Right. If you, you know, Ryland, what a reason you didn't start it at 20 years old or what have mm-hmm. you, right? So you got your catch-up provisions there. And that's catch-up provisions, the same with the Roth IRA. If, you need to, if you're over 50 and you're not where you should be, mm-hmm. they, they let you, instead of 6000 a year, you can go 7000 Right. Yes. And it's good to keep up and, and find out, hey, are they raising them next year or next year? And I'm not saying they raise them every year. Right. But yeah, because it was 20,500 for a few years. Yeah. So it just went up. Right. And so if you're making enough money and you, hey, I want to save more money, I want because compounding comes in effects. And mm-hmm. the more money you have working, the more compounds, the more money you'll have later. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to the folks about the Roth 401k. The Roth 401k is something that is within your 401k. So there's no tax deductible because it's after tax money. Right. So that will reflect on your paycheck, right? When you, when you're looking at all the deductions on your paycheck, your Medicare and all that stuff. So you're going to have a deduction in there that you're putting away for a 401k, which is before tax dollars. That's tax deferred. You will pay tax on that in the future, Mm -hmm. likely about when you retire. Um, after 59 and a half, um, Roth IRA though, or the Roth 401k, just like the Roth IRA, it's 
after tax dollars. So let's just use round numbers. If you grossed five hundred dollars on your paycheck, your deduction total is a hundred dollars, and out of that hundred, thirty-five dollars is for your your regular uh, Roth uh, or your regular. 401k, which is DAC tax deferred money. And then you have another line item that says Roth 401k, which is after. So Mm -hmm. after the net, after the net of your paycheck, another deduction comes out, Mm -hmm. right? And that'll spell Mm -hmm. it all out on the paycheck. Right. Which one do you think people should be more excited about? The Roth 401k. Why? Why? Because there's no taxes. Well, yeah. You've already paid the tax, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole benefit of the Roth. Yeah, uh, Roth IRA or the Roth 401k and is you're, in, you're contributing with after tax dollars yeah. and your employer isn't contributing to that one as well. Right. So the Roth is always the better way to go. Like if I work for somebody, which I don't, um, if I had the choice, let's say I was going to put away a hundred dollars, a check, every paycheck. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, let me split that. Should I go 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30? What do you think? I would say 50, 50. I'd yeah. rather have tax-free money. I would go 75-25. Mm, okay. Okay? And the reason is because you, on the 25%, right, the whole reason your 401k is tax-deferred, you get the benefit of a tax deduction each and every year, right? Mm-hmm. You, make that, you make that much less money, so you pay, you pay that much less money in taxes. Right. So it's, it's that sword that you want both sides of, I want to save taxes, but I want to grow money, I wanna but I want to grow more money tax-free. Right. Because one thing we all don't know is what are the future of our tax. Mm-hmm. And I, and I've been saying with the amount of debt that this country's in $30 trillion, ridiculous amount of money, like where are they going to get it? Right. From us taxpayers. Right. So it kind of makes sense. Like at some point in time here, they're like, guys, guys, we they're either going to keep printing money, which they've been printing like crazy over the last few years, or they got to say, we got to get more from the people, mm-hmm. you know, the people working and they're going to raise the taxes. Right. And right. and that's another a chart that we should always look at every year, because I think there's five levels of how you pay your taxes, how much money you make. The lowest is a 12 percent, which is, I think, under twenty two thousand or something. Right. You could double because those charts always move also. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, and I like to teach a lesson in there where it jumps by eight percent at one of the tax brackets. And oftentimes when people go to get a raise, and I think it's somewhere around the 120000 mark, and I, I got to look that up and, and I'll share it with you guys, that, man, I'm making 120 If I make 121 a year, I jump 8% tax bracket. And my boss wants to give me a small raise. Should I tell him thanks but no thanks? Yeah. Because actually, technically, I'm not getting a raise. You're actually costing me more money. Right. So I've taught that lesson many times. That's eye-opening. So... The point here is, guys, knowing your vehicles, what they do, right? Not just how they work. I mean, how they work is one thing, but how do they fit for you, Mm -hmm. right? Your job, how much money you make, how old you are, what is your actual game plan for retirement, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And not just go in there, get hired, go to HR, fill out this paperwork. What type of investor are you? Aggressive, you know, moderate or, you know, or soft, you know, take it easy on me. I don't want to low risk. Right. That's all they ask you. You just have three buckets to choose from. And that being said, how often should they go in there and talk to the HR department about their 401ks? Probably once a year. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do Let's let's just talk to them once a year because mm-hmm. I don't know about you. Think back almost every year. Our economy changes a little bit. I mean, it's shifting in, you know, is, is the economy growing in the sector of technology? Is it growing in the sector of commodities? Is it, what, what sector is it growing in? And where's my money parked? And I don't know, everybody watches the news a little differently, but if you knew that and you knew where your money was parked, do you think you would change where it goes? Yeah, roll it based over on to what's, something else. Yeah, based on where it's going, because those people are it's called they're called your custodian, which mm-hmm. means they're they're suggesting they're monitoring, but you you don't have to put your money where they tell you. Right. You could say, Hey, listen, show me some other buckets where I can put it in. Right. Mm -hmm. Give me some other track records. Maybe I want to move it this year. And it could be moving it because you're trying to catch up. You're being more aggressive or you could move it because it's the opposite. You're like, listen, I'm sitting pretty decent. I don't want to have losses. So let's put them in more um, in in, in areas where I'm more secure. I'm not likely to take, you know, big losses. Mm -hmm. Right. And so 
when you don't do that, I mean, I remember watching the 60 Minutes report and everybody's going, you know, depressed that I just lost 50% of my 401k. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't happen overnight, right? Even in 08, in the collapse, it took about six or eight months. So I would recommend now, if you see the tidal wave coming mm -hmm. of our economy going, ooh, going to go over the hill again kind of thing, like, go in there and talk to your custodian. What can I do to, to soften this pain right here? Where, you, where do you have me? Can I freeze my account? Because in some custodians will let you freeze the account. Oh, okay. So let's just that. say, hey, I got $200,000 in my 401 account. I'm watching the news and XYZ is happening. It looks like a wave's going to fall. I don't want to be, you know, wiped out by 10, 15, 20, 50 percent. Mm -hmm. You're like, freeze my account where the money is. I won't take that loss. Some custodians will do that. Not all of them. So check with your custodian. Right. Yeah, Again, there's a lot of custodians out there that handle these accounts. Yeah, that's good to know. It's not, it's, this is not one custodian that handles everybody's account. Right. There's multiple, you mm -hmm. know, um, all the big guys, Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard. I mean, all these guys who, you know, put your money in, depending on where you work, they su they're suggesting. So I think monitoring is the key. It's where, again, back to watching the videos that we've watched. And they're all very educational on how they work, but what's best for you? Mm -hmm. Are you 22 years old and you have a lot of time to grow money? Or are you 52? Or are you 52 years old? You're like, yeah, I got 10 years to go. I can't really risk a big, you know, splash takedown. Right. So, guys, I mean, understanding these vehicles that you definitely should be in, and, and should they pick one or how many? Several. Yeah, you can be in every one of those if you work for someone you're going to get both of the 401ks, traditional and a Roth one. Um, you can open up a Roth on your own, Roth IRA. Just, again, find a custodian. We're, we do Vanguard just because I think their fees are the lowest. But Fidelity and a bunch of the other guys do them, Schwab. You know, you can open those anywhere. Um, and after that, if you're still making more money and you're maximizing your contributions to these vehicles, you're like, I still want to grow more money. Where else can we grow more money? Index funds. Right. Let's go to index funds. There's literally, I think, almost 2,000 of those things out there. Um, you know, in an index fund, guys, um, the S&P 500 is an index fund. The NASDAQ is an index fund. The Dow Jones is an index fund, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Russell 2000. Those are all index funds, and there's lots and lots and lots of them. So um, I think going out there, and if you really want to put your money to work, is better. Plus... Taking the money out. What what are penalties taking the money out of any of these vehicles? They're going to penalize you 10% if you take it out before you're 59 and a half. Which ones? Which ones are penalizing you? That? The Roth IRA. The Roth IRA will penalize you, but you can take out of the Roth IRA your contribution. Yes. Right? So maximum contribution, let's just say 6000 and you've had it 10 years, you've contributed 60000 something in life happens, I need 10000 bucks, 20000 bucks, mm -hmm. whatever. You're like, well, I'm going to go pull it out of there and I'm not going to get penalized, right? Mm -hmm. After five, oh, FYI, you got to have that account at least five years. Right. So um, on the on the 401k side, yes, you can pay penalties and fees if you pull it out versus borrow against it. See, if you borrow, you don't get the penalty, but you got to pay it back. Mm -hmm. Rather than if I took it out, I just took it out I, and used it for whatever. Yeah, do they give you a time frame? Do you have to... Put it back? They're all different. You got to check with your custodian. Okay. Three to five years, typically. Some may be longer. Um, but the good thing about it is when you pay it back, you can pay back dollar for dollar or you can charge yourself interest, which I recommend, because now you're making more money on your money. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and in most cases, we don't want to pay interest on whatever we're borrowing. In this case, you do want to because it's to your benefit. So stuff. don't think like, hey, let me just charge myself 2% or whatever. Like, if you can afford it, pay, charge yourself 8%. Yeah. You're just being able to put, it's like catching back up, right? Without mm -hmm. the penalty. Mm -hmm. right? It's at the opposite of a penalty. Mm -hmm. We're catching back up. I get to give more than the allotted, say, the 20 grand or the 22 grand next year, right? Mm -hmm. So think about it that way, guys. If you need, because life happens, I've seen it all, all the time, and I need 10 or 20 grand, whatever it is. Where can I get it? I don't want to pay 10% penalty. Well, there's different ways of grabbing it. Mm -hmm. Different ways of grabbing it. Or if you're in an index fund, that's an investment account. I invest dollar X, it grows to dollar X. I can pull that out whenever I want. There's no the only penalty, it's not actually a penalty, it's a tax. You've got to pay tax. It's income. Mm -hmm. I invest in the S P five hundred, I pull out money 
whatever it is, is income. And now I have to pay taxes on that. Yeah. But again, most of these vehicles are about growing money, not put it in there, grow a little bit, take some out. It's, it's future, long term. Long term. Yeah. Try to forget it. Try to. But, you know, life happens. Right. So, well, guys, I hope you got a lot out of this. I mean, the rules, not just knowing the rules of the game, but how to play the game mm -hmm. is the other side of the coin here. And I kept trying to find more videos that most of them explained the rules of the game, but how to play them is different because we're all different age, how much money we make, what we need. Mm -hmm. Right. It's all different. So you have options out there. Yeah. All right. So cool. All right, guys, listen, uh, come back. We're going to uh, keep educating you on um, a lot of these different things having to do with money, whether these are vehicles. Um, I'm not sure what our next one is yet, but we'll surprise you. <laughs> all right. All right. You guys take care. All right, guys, listen, if you like what you're hearing so far, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and also hit smash the like button and then hit the notification bell. Because once you subscribe and you hit that notification bell, then every time we make a new one, guess what? You guys are going to be notified and you get to come and listen to the trainings that we're going to give you guys. So don't forget, hit that subscribe button. All right, thanks.